Greetings, folks. Hey, everybody. Hey, Shannon. How you doing today? I'm great, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm ready to small business here. I I'm 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 glad to be back. We had our we had our greatest yeah. greatest hits episode last week, or one of our greatest hits last week, and now I'm I'm eager. I'm happy to be back. It's good. Yeah, me too. I yeah. love talking to uh, to other small business owners this week. You know, I like how you said you're ready to small business. We're really pushing that concept of small business being a verb. Yeah, and you know, there's no action like getting outside, hiking. If you like to fish, if you like to hunt, and today we have a guest on the show that's built a business around. Uh, uh, being outdoors and for outdoors enthusiasts, which is all about action. So I'm real excited. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I've got, uh, and, and th this guy has, he's got such a different perspective from most entrepreneurs. He doesn't know it. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it with him in the show. You'll hear, but he really brings a, a like a wisdom to this, his first small business that most of us, some of us will never get uh, without listening. And and certainly most of us don't start with. So I'm, I really find his, just his approach really refreshing. Yeah, the framing is, is powerful. It's yeah. really powerful. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, what else great. is really powerful is Text Expander, our first sponsor here. Because Text Expander allows me to be both efficient and accurate. I know. It seems crazy. Usually you want to be efficient, you're running fast, and accuracy suffers, especially when you're writing an email. That can be okay if I'm just writing an email to Shannon, although I don't like to be, uh, I don't even like typos when it's just stuff that no one other than, you know, somebody that would forgive those is going to see. I don't like to have to have that forgiveness, but I especially don't like it when I'm dealing with my customers, vendors, whoever it is. That's not a good thing. And Text Expander saves me because I can move quickly and accurately because what Text Expander does is it allows me to take all of those things that I type on a regular basis. It might just be an address. It might just be an email address. It might just be a phone number or it could be a big, long customer service, you know, like first sales inquiry reply or a, hey, how do I do this reply? Something that you've typed out once and then you go into your sent folder to find the next time you're going to send it. Stop doing that and start using Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast because you can put all these things in there. They sync to all your devices. You don't have to go dig through your, through your sent folder. You don't have to copy and paste and worry about did it format right? No, you get it right in Text Expander one time. And then boom, it's in any platform, any app, anywhere you type. It's so much more powerful. And because you're a listener, you get 20% off your first year. So visit, as I said, textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more. And our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this next, this episode, <laughs> our next sponsor is build HR at your HR source.com slash pricing build HR is your HR source in your small business. They are your virtual HR department for you and your managers, right? You don't want to ad hoc your HR. Trust me, you can make mistakes here and those mistakes can be very costly and time consuming to fix down the road. You want to get it right up front and you want an HR nerd. Good news. Kelly Loudermilk, who was a guest on the small business show several years ago and the founder of build HR at your HR source.com slash pricing is an HR nerd. She's the one that you want. And she's figured out how to make it work so that her services can work with your business. So you need to worry about, you know, the HR. I mean, they've got complexities in HR beyond just federal and state laws, right? You want someone that has knowledge in all areas of HR and they've got a monthly HR on demand membership that gives you and your managers peace of mind with access to a national team of HR professionals. And you can have your handbook and policies custom made to fit your business and gain access to quarterly training for your supervisors in things like sexual harassment, including special California compliance, if that's where you're located. And it starts at only $99 a month and you get a 14 day free trial. So check it out. Yourhrsource.com. You can go to yourhrsource.com slash pricing. 
and learn more. Our thanks to Kelly and the whole team at your HR source at Build HR for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. Well, I am ready to small business with uh, with Adam Gifford here. If you are, I'm ready, man. All right. Well, I'm Dave Hamilton. He's Shannon Jean, and this is episode 289 of the Small Business Show. You know, I've had conversations that you know, I hang up the phone, and I'm like, wow, like that's that was powerful for me to hear. Is you know, they say, hey. If it wasn't for my duck calls, I don't feed my family. Or if it wasn't for this, I don't I don't pay my electric bill. So when you look at it in that context and you, and you look and realize, hey, you're helping families and across the country to make ends meet or have a, another source of income, um, it's not just just fun and games and rainbows and butterflies anymore. It gets kind of serious and brings it all home and makes it uh, – all that more special for me to, to continue building this. You know, Dave, I'm always excited when I get to combine two topics that I really love. The first, <laughs> the first being, you know, small business that we talk about here every week. Yeah. And also anything to do with being out outdoors, outside activities like fishing, People hunting. listening would never know that you had an interest in any of this stuff. It's No. <laughs> <laughs> and so th- today we get to combine both of those things. I'm really excited because uh, I'm just, I'm just so into it. Uh, so today on the show, we get to meet Adam Gifford. He's the founder and CEO of Tackle Hack, an online marketplace for outdoor enthusiasts, which is really cool. W- you know, doing some research, what I really learned and and what i love about tackle hack is there seems to be a focus on like small batch craftsman businesses that make products that you just can't find uh from like giant online resellers and stuff so i I really respect that and i'm i'm interested in learning more and i'm sure our listeners as well so let's meet adam and learn more about tackle hack adam thanks so much for coming on the show today thanks very much for having me guys i appreciate it um it means a lot that you even asked me to be on here yeah absolutely so Let's talk about, let's go back to the beginning. What led you to start Tackle Hack? Um, Is it something that you always wanted to start your own business or did it come about in a different manner? Um, There were a lot of factors, right? So I've always had uh, that itch to to start something of my own, but I'm also an avid outdoorsman. So a little known fact about me is I spent a lot of years um, not so successfully being a a pro-am bass fisherman. I did it mostly oh, for fun, nice. but uh, I did spend a lot of time uh, on the road in, in the southeast and the Midwest, traveling to to mid mid major tournaments. Nothing nothing crazy, no Bassmaster that's Classics awesome, or man. anything like that. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Totally, that's, that's totally NB, I am to you even more now. <laughs> that's, that's great. It was a, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was before the the high school fishing and the college fishing stuff hit the scene. So um, after college, I, I spent a couple of years um, working full time and and traveling and doing that. So. That kind of gave me my itch uh, for small business in the sense that I was working with with small batch manufacturers of of fishing equipment, and I was on their pro staff or field staff, whatever you want to call it. They all had different kind of names for it, but um, I started to recognize the pitfalls that they were having trying to break into the market and reach an audience, and so the seeds were kind of planted then, and I've just always been someone that kind of looks for something to start, right? Trying to find uh, yeah. something that satisfies my internal itch and the outdoors and small businesses have always been two of those things. And uh, fortunately for me, a few years ago, I, I was in a position to where um, the light bulb finally went off and it kind of made sense. And, you know, I started reaching out and doing some some of my own due diligence and, and some early customer you know, discovery and, and talking to some of the, the people that I actually worked with in the past and had since shut down their small business and, and talked to them and, and was really kind of diving into those pain points they were having and, you know, all kind of came together for me and, and it just kind of made sense uh, to, to match the two things that, that I'm passionate about being you know, outdoors and, and, and sure. tech really. Um, I'm not a developer. My, by trade, I like to dabble a little bit. Um, again, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none situation for me. Is 
Um, love to fish, but not not all that great at it. And I love to develop and not all, not all that being, great at being it. Great, being so. great at fishing has nothing to do with no. uh, being out there having the time of your life, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. So um, I do That's enjoy cool. that and um, the sport behind it. And so, you know, just nice. to be able to take uh, tackle act and, and, and converse and, and be a part of the industry and the market and, and talk with the people that I normally would be, you know, uh, working with anyways. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, that's great. It sounds like a great opportunity uh, you know, to do something you really enjoy and to help other people get, you know, their, uh, grow their businesses and, and get some exposure. So that, that's, that's really cool. Uh, so looking at like your LinkedIn profile and your background, I see lots of, you know, sales and marketing experience, which is kind of my forte. And, you know, whenever I start businesses, I always have to bring in a bunch of people, you know, experts, you know, folks that are way smarter than I am uh, in other areas too. Did, did you partner with other folks uh, that had different talent stacks when you wanted to bring Tackle Hack, uh, Tackle Hack to life? And if so, did you bring folks over as partners, contractors? Did you hire people? How, how did that go down? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the one thing I do know about myself is I'm not the smartest person in the room. And if I am the smartest person in the room, I need to find a different room to be in, right? So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so when I when I went forward and, and decided to, uh, to turn Tackle Act on, um, per se, there's still a lot of stuff we're actually working on, a lot of stuff that um, I can't really dive into, and there's a lot of stuff that you, you don't see on the surface with Tackle Act, and there's a lot of really exciting things and, and changes coming for Tackle Act and for our small batch vendors. Um, but yeah, I had to, early on, I went out and, and found contractors and, and uh you know, worked with them and, and now I have people on the team. I have, I actually have someone that's really proficient in digital marketing and uh, print marketing, all, basically all aspects of uh, the marketing advertising world. She's much better at it than, than I ever thought about being. And then I have a, uh, a CFO slash COO. He wears a couple of hats like we all do, but uh, he really understands, um, how to move the needle. Uh, so I kind of I play coach more than anything and, and help them uh, keep their eye on the prize, if you will, and see the vision of sure. where we're trying to go and, and steer them the right way. So I don't know what I don't know about a lot of stuff. So I, I try to make sure that uh, I get all the information I can before I, I play my hand. And my team has been, uh, been a major factor in moving us forward. So uh, kudos to them for, for getting us to where we are, but, uh, absolutely. You know, if you don't go out and find the smartest, most talented people, uh, and, and form a team, you're, you're not going to do it, um, by yourself. You know, you need, sure. I feel like you, you need that team, that support, um, in place or you're never going to go anywhere. Um, so yeah, I definitely, we're still building that team in a sense. We're looking for one or two more people and we'll be complete as far as our internal team is, is concerned. But, uh, for now, the three of us are really, you know, hitting our stride. So we're excited to, for what's about to come. Awesome. Yeah. Aw- yeah. You know, the, what, what you're talking about here seems, it's clear. It seems so obvious to you that, A, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room, and B, you want to have a team. Those two things are almost 180 degrees counter to what most entrepreneurs at least think when they start the smart ones get to the point where you are, but not everybody starts there, especially with their, you know, with their first business or sometimes even their fifth business. If you're, if you're me, uh, and, and it, this is, I just don't want this to be lost on folks. What what you're talking about here and having a team, did you play organized sports or were you in the military or anything like that, that, that gave you that, that showed you the success of that kind of a model early on? Yeah, I actually was a collegiate athlete that played basketball through college. Okay. And so always kind of had that team atmosphere, um, you know, captains of teams and things like that. And, um, yep. you know, it was very, very clear when a team was meshing, it was a completely different environment and atmosphere and level of success that we all would have. So early on, I, I, I realized that as far as, you know, being a teammate, and trying to be a good teammate, trying to be a good um, leader. At the same time, you got to surround yourself uh, with like-minded individuals, and if you're all on the same path, you know you can do some really great things. So, just trying to pull that over, you know, kind of like 
glad yeah. you brought that no, up. No, it's I obvious think, uh, that you it's obvious that you have that it and, and I was just curious where it came from because it's not a natural thing for most uh most entrepreneurs. So I, I knew it came from somewhere. Yeah, it's a valuable skill. It's yeah, cool for sure. So yeah. okay, so we have some background now. Let, let's talk about tackle hack uh specifically. Tell our listeners just what tackle hack is and and how it works. And then I, I would ask you as a follow-up, is the way tackle hack in, in kind of what it is now is what you envisioned it uh, as it would be when you first started. So I'll start with that last part first. Okay. It, it's not what I had intended to be at first. Um, so we've actually pivoted to where we are now uh, pretty early on um, to my defense. But when I first started this, it was the idea was kind of going back to my, my past on being a bit of a you know weekend warrior angler, if you will, and talking with those small brands and trying to help them out. That's kind of where it, it all kind of stemmed from. It's like, you know what? Let's just build like a small little online trade show, if you will. And then I started talking to more and more people, and I was like, you know what? It's much easier to give the small business the voice and the control and allow them to upload their products, set their pricing, and have us in the back trying to help them reach more consumers so they can sell direct to consumer. Um, it's their target audience. It's their target demographic. They don't have to compete with, let's say couch pillows and garbage bags on other marketplaces. But that's, yeah. that was kind of the yeah. whole, the idea. So we, we, we went from just, you know, let's, let's do this little online trade show type deal to like, Hey, wait a minute, let's, let's really do a double sided marketplace. Meaning, was allow our vendors to come on, upload their products, and sell directly to those outdoor enthusiasts that are looking for high quality, custom, unique products. So, there's that's another side, and I'll I'll save you my bass brain for another conversation. But you know, a lot of times fish get conditioned, and you, you need to find something a little different than they they've seen before. Um, so that's where as my pre- I hate to say the word professional fishing career because I, I, I don't consider myself professional at all. But, um, uh-huh. it, and if you saw some of the, the weights that I would weigh in, you'd be like, yeah, this guy's uh, far from it. But in any case, you know, at least in the sport of fishing, I understood that, hey, I need to find something a little more unique. So I would, I would purposely go out and seek those things. So I knew from my friends and my, you know, outdoor experience that, there was a miss. It was fragmented. There was a misconnection. So the, those unique companies were having a hard time sometimes connecting with the outdoor enthusiasts. Maybe they had a, a small little circle, 10, 15 mile radius of wherever they were located. But outside of that, no one really knew about them. So Got the it. marketplace made sense to help them, uh, you know, expand their business. And we're happy to say now we're selling. You know, businesses are selling across state lines, across across country borders and it's, it's kind of cool to see happen. That's yeah, cool. that's great. So, and kind of how it works. So if, if you're a, a manufacturer or you're a craft business, whatever, you're building something, you're making lures, you're building duck calls or anything related to outdoors, camping gear, that kind of stuff, you can then go up there, upload your products and you manage the, the relationship direct with the consumer. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. So a unofficial elevator pitch would be we're similar to Etsy, but dedicated solely to outdoor equipment. I like it. Yeah, that's cool. That's really good. Uh, so we we really, uh, as all of us are, you know, longtime small business owners, and it always seems to be, you know, one barrier in front of another that you have to kind of work over through. C- can you, you know, mention a, a, a barrier or something that you've uh, that's held you back that you've been able to kind of build a system to break through uh, for to find success with tackle hack. Yeah. So a lot of things with a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses is again, I kind of go back to finding the right people and putting, putting them in the right chair and having them doing the right things. And early on our biggest hurdle to overcome was to find somebody in the tech world that understood what we were trying to build and, and trying to create. There's a lot of really good developers out there that are great at building a single product to a single, you know, single vendor, single product, single consumer type website. But to upturn a marketplace, there's a little more 
um, detail on that. So early on, being in the Midwest, we're, we we struggled to find some of those technical partners that were sound in what we were trying to build. But fortunately for us, we've we've solved that problem. But that was a big hurdle early on was trying to create something that was unique and provided the the level of service that we needed it to. Uh, and quite honestly, we're still not there yet. We got, like I said, right. we got a lot of stuff that we're working on um, and to get there. Um, but I feel like we're we're moving in the right direction. And it seems like every time we have one of those large barriers and we get past it or through it, things just seem to open up for us. So, um, almost welcome those because at the time when you're in the trenches with it, it, it feels a little daunting, but when you get to the other side of it, you look back and you think, you know what, if it wasn't for that, I don't know that we would have be, um, where we are now. So thankful for some of those, um, some yeah, of them I never sure. want to go through again, don't get me wrong, but, uh, yeah, some, some of that early tech uh, development was a big hurdle um, for me, yeah. again, not being uh, technically sound enough to do what we're trying to do. Um, but uh, thankful we have that person in place now. Well, I like the yeah. realization that uh, now that you can kind of look back, even when it's not too far in the you know history here, that those barriers and the, the problem solving around uh, that – it, it does change. It does make you a better business owner, right? And and once you get to the other side of it, you you do tend to look at things differently. And it also often opens up uh, new opportunities for you. That's cool. It, it seems like every time we have a problem, there's two or three opportunities that come from it. So it's that's cool. always, it's, always it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. really good. It, so is this your first uh, business that you founded? It's my first technical business I founded. Okay. Um, I had a small marketing uh, company that a friend and I, we had several years ago. He's since passed away, but, uh, yeah, this is the first technical endeavor that I've, I've kind of yeah, started. That's great. And, and what would you, is there something that really kind of surprised you along the way of building this business? I mean, as entrepreneurs, you know, it all starts with this thing in our head and how it's going to be. Uh, was there something that, you know, if, if I like, what surprised you the most about building the company? Um, I think the thing that surprised me the most was how, how much pain was in this industry for this batch of people, meaning how many small manufacturers, individual makers were out there who were making really high quality products, but no one knew about. Them. And I knew that the industry was there again, when I first started this, this was not intended for as many vendors and products as we have now and, and what we, we plan on onboarding here soon. But that was kind of my, one of my, my, you know, my aha moment for, okay, we can really scale this and, and take it and do something special with it while doing something that I'm happy that we get to do. We get to help families and individuals and, and small business. Um, you know, I, I won't throw anybody's name out there, but, you know, I've had conversations that, you know, I hang up the phone and I'm like, wow, like that's, that was powerful right. for me to hear is, you know, they say, Hey, if it wasn't for my duck calls, I don't feed my family. Or if wow. it wasn't for this, right. I yeah. don't, I don't pay my electric bill. So when you look at it in that context and you, and you look and realize, Hey, you're helping families and across the country to make ends me or have a, another source of income, um, it's not just just fun and games and rainbows and butterflies anymore. It gets kind of serious and brings it all home and makes it uh, all that more special for me to to continue building this. Well, yeah, that's it, right? It makes it more powerful, and and it and you you know you can lean on those sorts of things during the the times where you have to just grind it out. You know, it, it's grinding it out is always easier in the beginning because it's new and you're happy about it. And then sometimes it feels like a job, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's better than many other jobs. Right. But, but still you can kind of lean into that and say, yeah, we're helping people today. That's a good thing. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it's a great, we talk about story all the time here and how as you know, entrepreneurs and small business owners, we get the opportunity to write our own story. And that is a power, powerful part 
you know, of as you tell your story out there and you build your business, that impact on other people's lives is is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, that that that's really great. So, what what's more challenging, you know, finding sellers to list their products uh, or buyers to come to you know and buy on on tacklehack.com? Yeah, so we have a we have a, a pretty open strategy about what we are doing. And, and we talk with our, our buyers about this pretty often, or excuse me, our sellers, our vendors, our makers. We talk to them about this um, frequently. Um, but we're staying constrained to sellers, meaning that we're only going after trying to find the sellers. We're not worried about our buyers just yet. Um, there's a lot, there's some tactical reasons for that. But the biggest thing is we're trying to build a inventory of products, right, to, to have, to even offer to our consumer. So on the flip side of that is we have to make sure that our customer experience, our user experience, as far as the end consumer is concerned, is pretty fluid and straightforward. This day and age, uh, the consumer has a, a very small window of error. So any kind of friction that we have on our platform, we're trying to eliminate. And what I mean by that is just, you know, the happy path for the consumer is find product, click the product, buy product kind of deal um so we're we're really trying to polish that up and get that to very streamlined situation so our buyers feel comfortable and good and, and have a good experience so right now we're focused on and staying constrained to getting those sellers and that's that's actually not the hard part for us the hard part is again those buyers because we want to make sure they have a good experience and at the same time who's tackle hack right we're a startup um, can you trust us? You know, are they going to steal my credit card information and, and sell it to, to to some someone bad? You know, and it's um, so that's that's what we are, are faced with is sure. um, talking to the sellers, making sure they understand. Hey, we're we are not marketing and advertising this platform a lot, we have, and we have reasons for that. Um, but yeah, the, I think the biggest thing for us is to make sure that there's a good experience for, for both sides of the marketplace, because what we don't want to happen is a boom and bust. We don't want to get a lot of sellers and, and then it just kind of trickle off and die because we don't have any buyers. So, uh, we're being very diligent about the way we, we form both sides of this. And, uh, so yeah. to answer your question, I've talked around it a little bit, but the more challenging is, is to find the buyers, but you know, take that word challenging with a grain of salt. It's uh, yeah. there's some purpose on why we are. Yeah. That makes um, sense. I, I, I really love, some- yeah. I, I love how you lean back into the, or lean forward into the, the credibility aspect of it, because that is so, you know, critically important, uh, getting out there, getting the word out, building that, uh, you know, your brand and your name and everything. Um, I think that's critical to recognize. And, you know, and I, and I see you guys on social media, you know, and one thing I always struggle with in my, you know, businesses is, you know, we have, we have limited resources. How, how are you going to split those things up? I mean, is there a, a, a platform out? I know you guys are up on go wild. That's how we connected through our Brad Luttrell that we had on uh, a couple of months. Well, I guess it's been about a month or so back. Is there one that works the best for you that you kind of push more of your resources? Um, I, I think the, the two platforms that work best for us are Instagram and go wild. And I'm not just saying okay. that because Brad's a friend of mine, but, uh, go wild is it, that's our dedicated audience, right? So anybody on that platform are people that we are interested in and engaging with on one level or another, either vendors or, or buyers, uh, mostly buyers, but, uh, uh, had some success there in Instagram, um, but quite honestly, we are, we're, we're ratcheting that back just a touch again, um, a very controlled situation uh, is what we're, what we're going after. So, um, you know, we start to, an ad does pretty well and we start to see an increase and we start seeing problems and, and things pop up on the site, bugs and glitches. So we kind of dial it back so we, we can have control of that. Um, you know, we're a small team. There's only three of us uh, on it, on it full time, and we have a couple contractors we work with on certain situations. So we want to make sure that again, it's a very controlled growth situation. So um, social media is a very powerful thing. It's a double edged sword, though. It can it can really help you. It can really hurt you. So we're we're trying to dance that line. Just 
<laughs> make sure that's that a good point. How, we do. how has social media hurt you? Like, has there is there anything in particular that you've run into that other people might want to avoid? Uh, well, for us right now, it's, it's traffic, right? So we re, we run a certain ad, and um, the traffic kind of gums the site up a little bit. So we're we're fixing things like that. So we got a yeah. it, it's a good problem to have. We we can turn the faucet on or we can turn the faucet off. And, um, right now, we no, kind of got I, it I, just I, dripping. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to get it flowing at the right rate. Otherwise, you can't serve every you can't serve anybody when the site's overloaded. Yeah, that's yeah. no, that's a tough that's a tough thing to manage for sure. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, Adam, uh, if, if you've ever listened to the show before, certainly our listeners know. You know, we're big fans of mistakes uh, because we kind of consider them tuition. You know, in fact, we wrote a book all about mistakes, and we, you know, always ask every guest. You know. If you could look back on things, what would you say is one of your best mistakes? And I'm making these quote signs in the air that you can't see because we're on the internet. Uh, the one that stuck with you and, and taught you a, a valuable lesson uh, as you built your business or maybe your previous marketing business, anything like that? Yeah, the, I think the best mistake that I've made is uh, it was my biggest learning experience. It, it taught me a lot about myself. And for a short period of time, and I, I want to preface this with there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. If it's something that you can personally manage and do, then go for it. It was just something that I couldn't personally manage and I, I didn't work well with it. But for a short, brief period of time, we took our development um, to an offshore development firm. Um, and when I say offshore, they were in Canada, but... Um, we used them for a little bit, but just the uh, there was just some miscommunications and and things that I just didn't have a really good time managing um, personally. So that was probably my best mistake. That that taught me, hey, you know, not that I need to be in their office every day, or not that I need them in my office. Uh, currently, we're working remote uh, as is, but I need uh, that that contact. If, if there's something I need to talk about. It's much easier for me to pick up my phone and call, you know, our in-house team than it is trying to get on the docket of a um, outsourced company. So yeah. that was uh, probably something that I learned pretty quickly. Um, and, and honestly, you know, I, I'm happy that we're not, again nothing against uh, offshore developers or uh, or firms outside of the states or firms in the states for that matter. Um, I just I like that we're building it all in the United States. We're helping companies in the United States. And uh, for me, it's just a lot easier and quicker, honestly, uh, to manage somebody on our team opposed to, you know, having to schedule meetings just to talk about an issue. Right. So that was probably my biggest learning uh, curve and mistake that I made. Unfortunately, um, early on in this, uh, this experience of, of tackle hack, but um, that, that's, that's something that I look back on now and wish that I hadn't hadn't done that. But in hindsight, you know, now that now I know. So now, now you know. Yeah. And now it's you know. it's very yeah. alluring. I mean, as somebody who wants I could build everything in my head, no problem. But when you gotta go implement it and then you, you know, go out and go, well, I can just hire somebody, go this it's cost less, this kind of thing, but there's a whole nother cost structure involved in it, one of which you you mentioned communication and your time and the quality of work that you get. So you it it is a different skill set to to manage that. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And again, since we've we've brought that in house, if you will, things have gotten a lot better for for all involved. So um, that's great. Yeah. Happy, happy that mistake happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. And so you know, you mentioned that you're kind of managing your growth right now as you build things. So what are some other benchmarks of success that, that you guys use to keep on track and, uh, you know, know that you're moving in the right direction? Yeah. So right now, our, our, like I said earlier, there's a lot of things that we have in the pipeline that we're working on to, to come out with. And that's going to change our, our KPIs completely. We'll, we'll focus on a couple of different things. But Right now, we're we're staying constrained to those sellers, so we really focus on um, on SKUs. So we want to make sure that we have a breadth of product that is something we can offer to our buyers. So we're really focused on that, um, and we're really focused on making sure that the vendor or the individual maker 
have what they need, not necessarily what they want, but what they need to transact in a digital environment. So those are the two things we're looking at right now. So we look, we look at SKUs and we look at functionality. Uh, again, we're early in this process. So um, you can almost consider it as, as a, as a uh, prototype really, or as one of my co-founders says, you know, we're held together with duct tape and bubble gum. So um, our enterprise solution that we're working on is what we're really excited about. And as I mentioned, the, can't really dive into that just too much, but sure. once that's up and going, the KPI is completely switch. So that's so awesome. you, you, That's interesting. You um, giving your vendors what they need uh, out of the gate, and then I, I assume is you know the future includes giving them what they want. Have you lost any vendors? And, and we don't need specifics, but I'm just curious because that's a tempting path to head down, right? You know, business owners. You, you always find yourself at that fork in the road of, well, do we do the minimum that, that we know is required or do we go extra on this one? And, and, you know, you could zoom that in or out and you're always making that decision. So I'm, I'm just curious how you balance that. Yeah, it's so it's, it's an internal cons, uh, discussion, right? We, we look yep. at it and, and what's the, the pros and cons of, of of all those, but um, yeah, I mean, we've lost some vendors. Um, I, I don't want to dive too deep yeah. into why no, we lost true. them because that's that's one of our value props we, we've got. Um, we are solving those, and that's going to open up the yep. doors to a lot, a lot of really cool new things that we're working on. But yeah, absolutely, we we've had to lose and, and turn down some vendors at this point before they even onboarded, sure. um, because of the the functionality that that they need. Uh, we yep. can't provide at a level that is sufficient to them. So, um, yeah, we absolutely are, you know, of course we put them on a list. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll knock on your door here shortly, but yeah, absolutely. We, we got to make sure, uh, we're a right fit for our vendors just as much as they are a right fit for us. Well, and that's an important thing to realize. It's very hard to say no, you know, when a customer comes knocking and you, you call them vendors, but really, and I, and I understand why you have that distinction in sort of your internal lexicon, but your vendors and your customers are all your customers, right? Like in, in the, at the end of the day, these are all the people that you're serving. You just have different, they, they have different needs. Right. And, uh, you know, knowing that there will be some on either side of that, that equation that you need to say no to, because it's, it's what works for your business. And sometimes what works for your business just doesn't work for somebody else's. And that's okay at some level. I mean, if you're saying no to everybody, well, you might want to rethink that a little bit, but you know, yeah. 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 You know, we, we like to say it's not no, it's just not right now. Yeah. That's, yeah. Good. that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like it too. So before we let you go, we have one, one more question for you. It's real important. You know, we, we really think of the term small business as a verb because there's so much action involved in creating, you know, building a, a business and, and ultimately, and hopefully being successful. Is there an action item, something that you can tell, you know, our small business owner listeners today, something that they could do today that would help their business based on some action that you've taken yourself in the past uh, with Tackle Hack? Man, th- this is sent- going to sound so cliche and, uh, and almost <laughs> <laughs> barbaric in a sense, but you've got to write it down. Uh, and I'm not talking just a, you don't have to do a full business plan. I'm not talking a 30 page business plan. I'm not even talking a pitch deck. You've got to write it down, get it on paper. This is what we want to do. This is where we are. This is where we're trying to go. And this is why we're trying to get there. Write it down and make it very clear how you're going to do it and get it on paper because you can throw that paper away a hundred times before you start putting it into to, to action. So I'm a big believer in write it down, plan it out, think it out, talk it out, look at all the options before you, before you move. Um, that can slow you down a little bit, but it also keeps you very lean. Uh, you don't have to waste time building things or, or doing things that aren't going to get you to your end goal. Um, again, that's kind of uh, taken me back to a little bit of my, my basketball days. You know, we had a very um, tight game plan of what we were going to do. We, a lot of times we knew exactly what we were going to do the first 10 plays of the game. It did not matter what the defense threw at us. We were going to do these 10 plays regardless. Um, and that's kind of doesn't really translate all that well, but I, I think – 
you know, the, the premise yeah, of it does sense, is, you know, make sure that, yeah. um, and it's, it's simple. It's, it, it doesn't cost you anything and you can really, uh, play around with it on paper a lot easier than you can just by, you know, jumping in into yeah. the deep end. But, uh, at some no, point you got to do that. Yeah, yeah I, I, with one of my businesses, I have a few, but there's one that's been around for almost 22 years. Two hours ago today, I was saying almost those exact same words in one of our staff meetings. Like, we got to write this down. We can't just assume that this and it, and it wasn't like fundamental to the business, but it was, you know, necessary. This thing that we just were discussing, I'm like, why we got to get it down somewhere so that it's somewhere. And yep. then, like you said, you can play with it. You can see it. You can refer back to it. It's not just this thing that exists as a as a you know figment of everyone's imagination. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I like it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm a big fan of either Trillo and things like that. But yeah, uh, you know my my number one and is Post-it notes and paper. You can move those around. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just a uh, yeah. I we use these uh, these little yeah. yeah. It makes sense. We we use these. I use this little quartet uh, glass, you know, whiteboard that goes in between your keyboard and your monitor. And it's like even just listening to you, I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And I just write that down, right? (laughs) Yeah, mine started blank before this show, and now it's full. (laughs) Yep, that's really the main reason we do these shows, Adam, is so we can just glean all this really great stuff uh, that helps. (laughs) Believe me, we're we're better small business owners since we started this show five years ago. Oh, Uh, remarkably so. yeah, Yeah, yeah. But Adam, you know. Thanks again for coming on the show and sharing your experience, uh, talking about H- Tackle Hack and you know how you got there and what your future plans are. Tell us uh, the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about Tackle Hack. Yeah, so the best way to do that is you, know, you can reach out to me personally on LinkedIn. Um, pretty easy to find uh, on there. Um, or just email us to the site. So you can go to tacklehack.com and shoot us an email and uh, – be happy to, to answer any questions you have. Awesome. That's great. I'm going to send some vendors your way that I know need to be up there because I'm tired of chasing these guys down to buy their goose calls and everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, great. Thanks again, Adam. And uh, please, you know, come back and k- keep in touch and check in with us from time to time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having a Kentucky boy on. It means a lot to me that you even ask. So uh, thank you. And hopefully something I said was uh, it can resonate with one person and I'll be happy with that. Yeah. It, are, it already has, my friend. Yeah. So two, thank you. Two people, yep. for sure. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, 100% so far. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Thank you. You know, there's always something. I always get so excited about these. I love doing this show because it gets me excited about, yeah, me too. about small businessing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, he said something and I, I, I wanted to dissect it, but I, I knew if I did, it would take us on a huge tangent and I didn't want to stop him. But he, when he was talking, we were talking about vendors that he had to say no to. He said something really interesting. He said, it's not a no, it's just not right now. And I, you know, I'm a language guy, right? Yeah, what I, a great I, phrase. But I started <laughs> I like. thinking, I started dissecting that phrase because I, I typed it out. I put it in into our show notes. And I thought, what if we, what if it's, it's not a no, it's just not right now. Instead yes. of it being not right now, temporally, it's not the right solution yeah, now, that's right? right? Like, like that's it. A, that, and, and, you know, presenting it that way to a vendor, when you say it's not right, you know, we're not going to do it now, that sounds like you're putting them off. But when you say it's not the best thing for you right now, now you've just started to build trust with this person yeah. that you're you going to call to the other side. You move to the same side of the table, same them, side right? of the table. That's it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, that, that like that's that when I see those things, it's like, wait a minute, there's a thing here. I'm going to use this. Yeah. So it's yeah. just little. Yeah. It's a little tidbits that we tease out of here. I, I love his comments about, you know, how he was it really hit him when. You know, these small business owners and, and makers and craftsmen that he's his site is having an impact on their life, you know, yeah. paying their bills, whether it's a side hustle or their main thing and helping them out. That is that impactful moment as a small business owner is one of the best things ever. You know, and I used to always tell our technicians, hey, 
we're changing the world one repair at a time. And it sounds kind of cheesy and it's like, wait, I don't know. But, you know, you impact one student, one parent that maybe couldn't afford to get a new com- computer in our case, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it, it could change the world. You know, Changes, it, it, uh, it, totally. Yeah. yeah it gives them an opportunity impactful. that they didn't have. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and I, I love that. It works here, too. We know that you're out there listening and we love to hear from you, even if it's just. I love to listen. Keep it up like that. Yeah. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's an attaboy. And, it is. you know, we're in our and we're in our studios here. Like we we don't hear your attaboys. So we'd love to send them to us at feedback at business show dot co or comment on the Facebook post, what, wherever you want to do it. We'll see it. But we yep. we just we like we love those attaboys. I know it sounds vain, but it's no, it's really not vain. No, no, it's just it's that fuel. Yeah, yeah. We all use that. Yeah. yeah. And if you have a, a spare ninety nine cents burning a hole in your pocket, since our mistakes uh, book is still on sale up at Amazon, please go to businessshow.co forward slash guides and buy that book because not only will you get that guide for 99 cents our partnerships guide is going to launch on september 1st and you'll get a free version of that one as well so now's your time to get both those books for less than a buck and help out the show that you love so much all right well that's what i got for this week shannon you got anything else that's it. I'm ready to go out and hunt after talking. Oh, well, there you Adam. go, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks so much for listening. Send us that feedback. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. Bye.